Hey, it's Paul from HowToNetwork.net. We're going to be doing a few lectures on access lists. This seems to be the part that most Cisco engineers, or certainly, certainly junior engineers, seem to struggle with, and I know I did when I worked at Cisco TAC. The first thing I knew about access lists, or even that they existed, was I was given a live phone call to take with a customer who had a problem with an access list. It wasn't working properly. So not only did I have to learn how access worked in about five minutes, I had to then explain to the customer why his access list wasn't working. So I don't recommend uh, you doing that. Uh, what I recommend is just following through these lectures, understanding the theory, but really you're only ever going to understand access lists by configuring them. And uh, I really do recommend you configure them on your own lab at home or on our hatternetwork.net racks. And um, it can be frustrating to start off with, but once you see how they work and why you broke things and they, it becomes apparent, you'll very quickly and easily be able to configure access lists and troubleshoot them for others. So in this first lecture, we're just going to cover a, a couple of things and I, I could um, I could go into a lot more detail, but what I want us to do is just get the, the fundamentals right first. So the first thing we're going to cover is basically what is an access list. It kind of becomes more apparent as we go go through the training and the lessons and then some rules these are the things you don't really find these written in any mu uh, any books i've i've put down the rules as i've discovered them in ccna simplified my ccna textbook but there's very few manuals out there that seems to be the sort of thing that people expect you to either know or learn on the job which personally i don't find uh, particularly acceptable and i'm sure you don't either All right, so basically this is what we what I define as an access list. It's a set of conditions executed sequentially. So basically it goes in a sequence and the sequence is from top to bottom. Important to remember this and we'll, we'll cover this in more detail. When a condition is matched, no further conditions are inspected. So basically it's just a set of rules that uh, give the uh, router a yes or no answer and you'll decide what conditions happen when we hit the yes or the no. Okay, so... Let's look at some ACL rules. Uh, I'm going to read all these out and then I'm going to cover each one in a little bit more detail. So these are the rules of the road and you need to know these. First one is you can only have one access list per interface per direction. The second one is access lists are processed top down until you reach a match. That's an important one. Number three, there's an implicit deny all at the bottom of every access list. Number four, access lists do not filter traffic generated from your router. So outbound traffic leaving your router if it's generated from itself. You can't edit a live access list. I'll, I'll give you more detail about that and the exceptions later. Six, you can turn off an access list per interface. Number seven, you can use the same access list more than once. You can apply it to lots of different places and interfaces and ports. Number eight is a rule, really, rule of the road. Keep them as short as possible. I see a lot of very convoluted access lists with 20 lines when you could get away with three or four, believe it or not. So this is part of the skill. Number nine, place them as close to the source of the filtered traffic as possible. So if the route, if you're filtering traffic from your local area network or coming in from the internet, you will place the access list in different places. So let's look at rule number one. One access list per interface per direction. What, what on earth does that mean? Well, it would help if we had a diagram here. So this is our router, obviously, I'll call it router1, and we have over here, I'll just mark this in a lower file, we have our serial 0 here, and serial 1 here, and we've got fast ethernet 0 here, and we have our access lists. Uh, I won't actually write it out, but say so you've got access list one, you've got access list two, access list three, 
access lists four and access list five. So you've written different access lists for your router. And the rule I mentioned is one access list per interface per direction. So what do we mean by that? Let's change our go back to our blue. Well access lists can filter traffic in two ways. They can filter it coming in and this is obviously from this side of the router so if we have our um, your LAN here and then we'll call this the internet or it could be your WAN here. So it can filter inbound traffic or it can filter outbound traffic. So the rule is one access list per interface per direction. So in serial zero you could have one access list going out. That's filtering traffic leaving the router. Why we're putting it on here it really doesn't matter. I just want to illustrate a point. So you could put access list number two here. Now if you wanted to inspect traffic coming into the router you could have another access list doing that. You could have access list number one for example. Over here this could be connected to your corporate network and for that network you could have access list number four. You could also have an outgoing access list which I'll do here you might want to use the same access list as the above, ACL2. What you cannot do, just run out a bit of room here, if you try to apply another access list coming in, you cannot apply access list 5. So if I get my red marker, that would not be permitted on the interface one access list per interface per direction. Now I could add to this per protocol because you could have an IP access list coming in on serial one and you could have an IPX. I only mention this, I don't really know of anyone using IPX still but you never know. You could have an Apple Talk. So you could have three access lists coming in on that same interface as long as they're on different protocols. So it's, a, a, it's the risk of hiding information from you or making it too complicated. If you want to ignore this per protocol please do but you just never know if, you get, if you're going to get asked a, a silly question in the exam even though they don't cover IPX anymore. Now over here you've got your fast ethernet interface you can have an access list 5 for incoming traffic and you could have access list number I don't know, it doesn't really matter number 3. So these are all legal things the only time when you went wrong is over here when you tried to apply two access lists. Why can't you do that? Well, if you think about it, the whole point of an access list is to inspect traffic. Why would you need two access lists when you can just write one access list that catches everything you want? All right, so we've covered rule one. Let's look at rule two. Processed top down until matched. What do we mean?